Ready, run. Pikachu. Good boy. Some survivors are gen tapping. Gen oh, oh no. Oh no. That's the only counter to ruin it. It's a pretty damn good one. Or, you know, just find the totem, but. Well, the other counter is finding <laughs> that's to say. I want to gush, I want to gush about uh, Xenoblade for the Xeno, Xeno series for a minute and just explain why I love it so much. I mean, if you want to. So, like, I told you. I told you there was like a potential 300 hours of post-game content in Xenoblade 2, right? Yeah. That's excluding New Game Plus, by the way. Well, I don't see that Which... as post-game. I see that as New Game, but I mean... Well, yeah, the New Game Plus has like a, some changes to the story as well. So, yeah. But, like... That's the reason I love it. And that's the, I mean, Xenoblade 1 wasn't really like that. But that's the reason why Xenoblade X and Xenoblade 2 are so fucking good, in my opinion. And each of their stories are, are pretty decently connected near the end. Like, there'll be a twist where it's like, oh, fucking this one event in the future of one game is literally the reason why these, why these games exist to begin with. So like, um, so like in Xenoblade 2, right, the world is all rest and it's like there's a cloud sea. There's no actual land, but and you live in, everybody lives in the back of one of like five, six titans, big titans. And so 
uh, the Titans are dying, and the people are losing their homes, and if all the Titans die, then that's the extinction of life on Mira, or on all rest. So, that right off of that, we have pretty serious things. And one of the Titans is already really close to dying, more Ardain. But, uh, that one doesn't ever die. Why? No. Well, because, like, you know, uh, more Ardain is one of the biggest hubs in the game. Which uh. they also take one of the big hubs in the game, and you literally fucking kill the Titan and everybody on it. I'm sorry, excuse me? Because the leader refused to evacuate everybody, but that's not beside the point. At the end of Xenoblade 2, it is revealed that this is not its own world, but is a reincarnation of an Earth. Right? Okay. Like, so, someone, some doctor dude, his name is Klaus, uh, space station he was on was under siege by people trying to take over the planet. Uh, humans, not aliens. So we used a thing to reset the world, thinking, uh, it would better everything. So the cycle repeats itself, and like 500 years before the beginning of the game, humans appear again. Huh. Right? Okay. And, uh, he wants to see if humanity's changed at all. And, I mean, well, they haven't, because people are people, but he, he has a different way of thinking, because he's had so long to ponder over this. But he only, alright, so Klaus only has half of his, half of his body by this point. Right? Okay. Like, because the other half is in another dimension. And then, uh, there's three Aegises that are created from the AI, that the fucking thing that, that reset the world run off of. Uh, but one of them gets sucked into the, to another world as well. Uh, we never see what that one what that one is. Uh, the main bad guy of Xenoblade 2 is, is the, one of the three Aegises, and then Pyra and Mithra are the other Aegis. It's a very uh, confusing story, but alright. A little bit. So, um... Fuck! I almost lost track of myself. So everybody goes up to there, and it's like, uh, they go to find Elysium. Elysium's supposed to be this paradise. It's supposed to be heaven on Earth. But, turns out that, uh, th all right, so they went to go to Elysium because of Pyra's memories, uh, of Elysium. It's like where she was created. But it turns out that, uh, her memories are from the Earth before all of us. Okay. So it's a fucking desolate, it's just like a fucking desolate space now. And so everybody has like a fucking collapse moment where they're all like, it's, it was all for nothing. And then uh, Klaus tests all their memories to see if they're good people or something. I don't really understand that part too much, if I'm being completely honest. Uh, I'm losing track. So they all go up to see Klaus, who everybody calls the architect because he's like their god. He architect, he's the architect of the world. Okay. So they'll go, and they're like, okay, well, why is everything like the way it is? And so it's like... Kind of explained, but not really. But then it's like revealed that he only half of his body. And it turns out that uh, the other half of his body is um, Zanza, who is the main bad guy of Xenoblade 1. So it's revealed that Xenoblade 1 and 2 are born from the same, like, the worlds of Xenoblade 1 and 2 are born from the same, like, incident. Like, the creation of, uh, the New Earth created another universe. And so the third, uh, the third, um, Aegis is widely believed to have been sent to that world as well, and became the Monado. It's um... weird! And, and I think, I firmly believe, that um, Xenoblade 2 does not put, take place on Earth, the world that was Earth, but is a future version of Mira, the planet from Xenoblade Chronicles X, that everybody on Earth had to go to after Earth was destroyed. I believe that is the first in the Xeno timeline, in the entire Xeno timeline. Because it's all kind of connected. You, the story is just... Um, it's, it's, I'm trying to explain something very big, with very little words, honestly. Someone could probably summarize it better than me. I'm playing Michael not like how I normally play Michael, because I'm zoning out, converse, conversing. Oh, they're Claudette. 
You just messed up. Never mind. No, you didn't. What are you doing, Meg? Ah. I'm keeping yeah, these generators straight. under lockdown, my friends. So, like, every Xeno game is kind of connected. Except they're all... Very connected. Ah, it's dumb! And then Xenoblade 2 is connected to the previous Xeno Saga games. Because the character Cosmos, who is one of the main protagonists, is an actual character in that game. But it, and she's a blade, and blades are like these not human human life forms. Sometimes, sometimes they're animals. It's weird, but like she's not a normal blade, even though she's not part of the story. Uh, her side quest reveals she's actually an AI who became a poor crystal. I don't. I'm confusing myself talking about it, dude. If I'm being completely honest. I'm I'm like trying to listen, but then I get into a chase, and it's just like I I tune back in like it. And it's just, I hear about separate worlds and Earths, it's just like, what? Drew, don't worry about it. Sometimes I lose track of my scratch marks. Like, like all I, I'm, I'm sorry if I wasn't paying attention to the entire thing, but like... It's cool. All I'm saying is, it's really good. And even though most of the games share a very similar message, it's still really good and fun. And I love it. And you should play the games if you care at all. But I know, I know you don't really, so, you know, the battle system's kind of weird. I agree. That in the game just doesn't really interest me. Yeah, I'm I'm a sucker for story-driven RPGs. You know this. Well, I mean, I love Bravely Default. Yeah, but like, I like more than just two games. This is a not I want to get a good match. sense for my red stain. This is a really not fun match. Yeah. That's how I think whenever I go against a Quentin, if I'm playing Freddy. Except I never play Freddy, and nobody ever plays Quentin. Excuse me? It did the auto-aim! There we go. For you? Yeah, there are ghost hits in this game, as well as ghost chainsaws, and it annoys me. You ever had an auto-aim take you away from a survivor before? I've had that. Yep. That's why it's, I always try to flick into them. It's not as heartbreaking as fucking ghost saws. Where it plays the animation of sawing them in half, but it doesn't do anything. Yeah. I am keeping this game alive just from fucking two or three generators. I'm at three as well. I'm also at tier three, so there's that. The segment is very good. Overcharge is saving my me. ass. I kind of wish I brought an ivory with me. I do too. Thank you, Claudette. I can do progressive more. Okay, so they're gonna be right by this gen if I'm lucky. <coughs> oh, there you are, David! Gotcha! I was lucky, true. I am currently getting lucky as well. Now listen here, Claudette. Oh. Fucking ape. Stop touching you my straight up, monkey. Stop touching my Jenny. I knew it! My Jenny, my Jenny, Jenny, Jenny. Show me your Jenny. Show me the moves, bitch. I want to avoid taking that David off the hook with his flashlight, but- Oh wait, he doesn't because I run Franklin's! <laughs> Move, lightning. Go! Move! best thing about overcharge is that they still have to deal with it even if the generator is fully regressed and if they tap it and then run off they'll have the skill check and if they and if it misses it'll like blow sparks even though they're running away and it'll and the sparks will be centered on them so it'll just look like they're blowing up all right <clears throat> that sounds great what's up you know, you know, you know, huh is she heading out right now? You know what I ended up doing is? What? I put a wet sub in your side set. Mm-hmm. 
Oh, that works as a side? Sweet. Nice. Don't mind me, it's Tanya. This little Chinese bitch. Oh. Oh, she had full health. Okay. I mean, she didn't capitalize on that by running away at all, but... Nobody, I hate matches like this where everyone starts going full immersion. Like, oh, I have to be sneaky because he's patrolling three gens. Um, so that thing, man, she had full health, right? But I hit her. Uh, she just kind of stood there and took the other hit. Probably was giving up. Oh my god. Gosh, I hate survivors that do this. They're such fucking bitches. I get I do this, but it's only if it's only one person, it's fine. I can understand that. At this point, they may as well give up because I have my dying light. They only have two gens done. I have half of tier three up, and literally all both of them are full stock. So I are mean, you playing Michael too? Yeah. I I could I was not doing well with Billy earlier, so I decided to just play Michael. Oh, that was a waste of a tier three. That's very unfortunate. Wow, I sure do love full immersion games. Oh, I got Stalker. That's pretty unfortunate, I'm not gonna lie. Ooh, who did I stalk? Please let this Quentin be behind this wall. Damn it. If I play this smart, I will have my kill. Or I could just hook the David and be done with it. I'm gonna do that. I'm so glad pre-nerf uh, brand new parts don't exist. Nope, now I gotta hurry up and find Hatch. Because they could, they could, if this were pre-nerf brand new parts, they could literally just run up to a gen and do it immediately. <laughs> That's how they used to work. You could just press the button and boom, they're done. This is another really good thing about Whispers, in my opinion. Oh, found Hatch! I don't need Whispers, I just need to patrol these three gens, but I have to also go soon for work. There, there you are! Oh, this is very bad. Oh, she gave up. Uh-huh, as expected. Now I'm gonna leave you on the ground to make this even more painful for you. You're the ones who decided to stay hidden for a good seven minutes, so... I really wish I could close hatch. I do too. Halo's There's... like toxic for wanting that, bro, and I'm like, well, it's not very toxic of me to not want to sit there for two hours. Yeah, I know he's here because Whispers is going off. I'm saving tier three. You guys ain't getting it. Oh wow, you're leading me away. How useful. If I were a betting man, and I am, I would major to guess somewhere over on that side that I'm looking at right now. You wouldn't know because I'm playing this game and you're not. Oh my gosh. You've lost the game. Just let me fucking get my win. This is my least favorite thing. What time is it? Almost 6.30. Fantastic. I have 15 minutes, basically. Oh, fucking nose. And they're both Claudettes. And they're at rank 8. So they both have self-care. There you are! I'm sorry, Claudette, but you're not- you're not getting away from this. I've got all night, Quentin! I don't think this Claudette realizes that I'm gonna kill her regardless. 
Nope. Get over here. You've wasted enough of my time. I can't wait to see that new Kobe perk come in and then I put someone on the hook and they immediately get off. Oh, isn't that one of the new Survivor's things? Yeah, it's called Deliverance. I'm not at the point where I can't talk to Split anymore. That's really fun. I have no idea. Sorry. Alright. Well, I won. This is my least favorite thing. I'm, I'm at a hatch standoff right now, dude, and I'm really upset. I know the feeling, man. Don't worry. Just take the L! I'm not going to! Honestly, I would just let him have it. I, I could not. I like. I got three kills, so I would just. I want the extra out. blood points. Oh my gosh, these frames! What is happening? Okay, there we go. It's normaling out, kind of. Lighten, get out of here. What's it like having three crows, dude? <laughs> 